she was beautiful, happy, hilarious, wise beyond her years. And she had so much more life to live. Alexis Tierra Murphy was a happy 17 year old in her last year of high school and had plans to go to college. She was a volleyball player with a solid social life consisting of many friends. In preparation for her graduation, Alexis wanted to go out of town to get her hair done. So on August 3rd, 2013, her mother Laura gave her money for her hair and watched her leave home in her dad's white 2003 Nissan Maxima for the last time. Alexis traveled from her home in Shipman, Virginia to Lynchburg, which was about 20 minutes away. Alexis did not return by midnight. She had a curfew that she stuck to. Her grandmother immediately knew something was wrong. Alexis's mom called her father to discuss the fact that she failed to return. He recommended that she call the cops immediately. Three days later, the white Nissan was found in a parking lot of a Charlottesville movie theater. It had been abandoned the night after Alexis was reported missing, but cameras failed to capture who was behind the wheel. The gas station cameras captured Alexis at a gas station in Lovingston. It was a common hangout for teens. Cameras there captured a man holding a door open for Alexis. The man had a large neck tattoo and he was driving a camouflage Chevrolet Suburban. During the investigation, investigators had a tool at their disposal, cell phone pings. The cell phone pings led investigators to an abandoned property along Route 29. The shrubbery on the land was overgrown, taking over the old house, but that wasn't the only thing hidden. On the land, authorities found a camouflage suburban and a camper belonging to a 48-year-old man named Randy Taylor. Both Taylor and his camper were thoroughly searched. It was there that a strand of hair was located. At that very moment, detectives believed that an abduction and homicide had taken place. As the search went on, they located a diamond-studded piece of jewelry a torn fingernail, and blood on the back of a t-shirt that Taylor was wearing that day at the gas station. All items were tested and matched Alexis Murphy's DNA. Taylor denied meeting Alexis, but when he was confronted with the surveillance footage, he admitted under questioning that he did see her at the gas station. He said that her, and as he put it, a black guy with dreadlocks came to his camper to get drugs. They drank a few beers and then she left his camper, as he put it, laughing and smiling. And that was the last he saw of her. The police immediately spoke with Damian Bradley. Mr. Bradley gave the police an alibi that not only checked out, but was also rock solid. He was in another state with a family member at the time. So investigators interviewed the attendants at the gas station. They all told the same story, that Taylor was a customer that unnerved them. They said he would park his vehicle at the station and sit there for hours as he watched people enter and exit. Investigators went back to Taylor's home and property and searched even more. They found pornographic photos with the head cut out and replaced with pictures of a girl. Police learned that the girl was Taylor, co-worker's daughter. Then K-9 units were called in and were able to find Alexis's iPhone just 15 feet away from Taylor's camper. Taylor was then arrested and indicted on charges of first-degree murder, first-degree felony murder, and abduction with the intent to defile. On May 1, 2014, Randy's trial began. He pleaded not guilty to charges of first-degree murder, first-degree felony murder, and abduction with intent to defile. On May 8th, Randy was found guilty. At his sentencing hearing, he claimed he would reveal the location of Alexis's body in exchange for a shorter sentence. The Murphy family indeed wanted to lay Alexis to rest respectfully, but they rejected Taylor's offer because they reportedly didn't want to negotiate with the person responsible for her murder. 
After nearly eight years without knowing exactly what happened to 17-year-old Alexis Murphy, it was reported that her remains were located. The Chief Medical Examiner's Office confirmed the identity of the remains as Alexis on February 5, 2021. A local news station reported that the remains were found on December 3, 2020 on a private property near Stage Bridge Road along Route 29. Now Murphy's family and friends say they finally have closure as they lay her to rest. Saturday, the Nelson County High School football stadium filled with memories of Murphy, who played volleyball, was a beloved daughter, friend, and sister. Today, she would have turned 25 years old. You know, you still hold out hope when you have a family member that's missing that, you know, that they will still be here with us. Um, but we know where she is now, and now we were able to put her to peace, and now she's able to rest. Family members thank the FBI and local law enforcement for bringing Alexis home to them. The announcement about locating Alexis's remains was delayed in order to give her family the proper time to grieve and make arrangements. Alexis was a sister, a friend, and a daughter, and she didn't deserve what happened to her. Things like this happen to many of our girls worldwide, and I would like for you to join me in keeping these girls in our prayers and protecting our girls. Alexis Murphy's life mattered and we'd like to send our condolences to her family. This is Awareness by Creole Kisses. Be safe and have a good night.